You're listening to the 40 Thrive Podcast, the show created for women 40 and beyond, ready to shake things up. And now, your host, Jackie McDougal. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of 40 Thrive. One of the things you may have noticed about this podcast is I don't do a lot of fashion and style and beauty content. It's not that I don't love those areas. It's just that I don't feel necessarily my most confident when talking about topics like that. I don't know about you, but for me growing up, I wasn't cutting edge when it came to the latest fashions. I didn't have the Jordache jeans. I remember borrowing them from a friend. I had all the knockoff clothes and sneakers and all the things that were so cool. You know, I'm the 11th kid of 13. Like it wasn't like we were running out and buying expensive designer stuff. So as an adult, I can totally appreciate quality staples in our wardrobe, right? Spending a little bit more money on the stuff that we'll have for a long time while maybe spending less money on items that are sort of like seasonal or trendy or whatever. But I'm the last person that would call herself a guru when it comes to my appearance and what I put out there into the world. So I spend a little bit more time talking about things that I feel I have something to contribute. Until today, you know, I've had a lot of pitches from women, stylists, experts in a variety of areas when it comes to how we look and feel. And I've always sort of just moved on and, and not really paid too much attention to it until I met Karen Lettery from Democracy Clothing. Now, Karen is the sister of a fellow podcaster, Julie Neal, who has a Mother's Quest podcast. She totally hooked us up. You know how I love to shout out those women who connect other women over 40. And so thank you, Julie. But I met Karen because the work she's doing at Democracy is so much more than just zipping on a pair of jeans. And I've really learned a lot from the 40 Thrive community that how we show up physically makes a huge difference in how we show up mentally, emotionally, spiritually, all of it. And the thing about Karen is she's inching toward her 60th birthday. She totally gets what we're going through. She has all of us in mind when she creates new clothing, jeans, anything at Democracy. And she's really all about helping women feel confident, feeling good in their own bodies. And one of my favorite things, not connecting value to our shape and size. You'll hear more from her directly, but she's all about creating clothing that can fit a variety of sizes, not because you have something to hide, but because women come in different shapes and sizes. I know, newsflash. And so she is so committed to creating clothing that is for women of all different shapes and sizes. That is what first attracted me. Another thing about Karen and Democracy is that they're all about accessibility. So the clothing isn't this crazy price point. You're buying a staple for your wardrobe, but you're not buying a $200 pair of jeans. But before I even got into any of this conversation with her, before I would even record with her, because you know I've got your back, I got myself four pairs, yes, four, of Democracy jeans. I got different styles. I got a boot cut. I got like a girlfriend, boyfriend jean type thing. I got a pair of camo pants. And then I got another pair of like colored jeans. I never wear jeans that aren't necessarily just that denim look. So I got a pair of those. I've been wearing them around. I've been sitting at my desk. I've been taking my Zoom calls. I've been going to the dentist and doing everything in my democracy jeans before I would record because I wanted to make sure it was something that was really valuable to you, right? I love them. They are stretchy. I can literally do splits in them. And yes, I'm 50 and I can do a split. So that's one thing I have going for me. I feel like Sally O'Malley in my jeans. I can kick and I can stretch and I can kick and I can do all this stuff in my democracy jeans and they look pretty good, I have to say, and I feel super comfortable in them. Now, enough about me and my newfound fascination with democracy jeans. I also wanted to make sure that any of the work that we did was really to your benefit. And so Karen, who's about to come on, is offering you 25% off at democracyclothing.com. 25%. All you have to do is use the code 40thrive at checkout and you will get 25% off site-wide on everything. But here's the other thing. For the first five pairs of jeans that are purchased on the Democracy website, Karen has also offered to gift five women in the 40thrive community a free pair of jeans. 
Now, of course, free jeans is just cool regardless of like why, but I think it's really cool for those women who may need a little bit of help getting back to work, or maybe you're a first responder who's been busting your butt for the last year plus, or you're just someone in the middle of a transition, a life transition, career, relationship. You know, a pair of jeans may not change the world, but it can really, when you zip that up and you button those jeans and they feel good and you look good, it can really boost your mood. And in turn, when you're in a better mood, you show up better. And so I am so excited to offer five pairs of Democracy Jeans as a gift to five lucky 40 Thrive community members. So this is what you got to do. You've got to be in the 40 Thrive free and private Facebook group. I will tell you exactly how to win one of the five pairs of jeans in that free and private Facebook group. So just go to the show notes. I'll link to it right there. And you can find out exactly how to enter to be one of the lucky winners. And now let's just jump into my conversation with Karen Lettery. Karen, welcome to 40 Thrive. I'm so excited to be with you, Jackie. So the first thing we have to do, so I have to give a huge shout out to your sister, Julie Neal. She has the podcast, A Mother's Quest. And I have known her through podcasting circles for a few years. So thank you, Julie, for connecting us. So I want to talk all about Democracy Genes because anybody who listens to this podcast knows that I don't just talk about a product or a service or a brand without trying it myself to really see if what I'm putting out there in the world is really good for my audience and good for my community. So one of the things that's super important to me is creating a community for all women. And the more I dove into democracy, it really is a company that cares about women. Has that always been kind of in the mission of democracy? I'm the oldest of three sisters, and I've always been a very nurturing and caring person. And I've been passionate about that. With democracy, There's so many dimensions to what it is. It always started from the original premise, which is identifying a problem that existed Mm -hmm. and trying to find a way to solve the problem. And as we progressed with that, we made lots of different kind of segue discoveries about not just the superficial, obviously we're not walking naked in public, we have to wear clothing, (laughs) but what happens when you own what you wear? And when what you're wearing is something that doesn't just fit you, but that you fill. With respect to democracy genes, I call it the gene embrace versus the tight gene squeeze, Mm. because that's what we do. We hug, we embrace, we envelop, we allow you to fill it lovingly and feel comfortable and feel good as opposed to just pouring yourself into something. And, And if you think about just evocatively what the difference is between thinking that you're squeezing into something versus feeling like something is embracing you maximizing your assets in the most comfortable and flattering way. And that ease and comfort, what that does to to enable you to go out and tackle whatever you're going to get accomplished for your day. Right. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And I want to dive into that right there because you said your assets, right? So you're having a big birthday coming up. Yes, I am. I just had my 50th. And so I don't know, there's something so special about these big birthdays. This audience starts at the age of 40. It's not for women in their 40s, but they start at the age of 40. So when you think about when you were back at 40 years old, almost 20 years ago, would you have considered our bodies, the shape and size and all that, our assets? Or did you subscribe to the bullshit story that the, that the media sends us that they're problem areas? The problem areas are just the problems that, that we internally deal with in terms of how we feel. I really have always sort of subscribed to this size inclusivity. I know there's a movement of body positivity, but my perspective is always inclusivity because we all need to wear clothes, right? You know, we all need to eat food. Like our relationship with that and how we feel about that is individual. And I don't assign any, any value or judgment on that. Um, The birth of the brand was really the result of um, my experience dealing with my post baby body. Mm. which, you know, I had my kids in my early 30s. So in my 40s, I was carrying, you know, I laugh, I call it my post baby body, but I carried the weight for decades. You know, it just never really left It's just me. post post. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and your body, your shape transforms. It's not about weight. It's just 
just the physical transformation that our bodies go through as, mm-hmm. as we progress in life. And my personal experience was I have a small waist and curvy, you know, bigger thighs. And so I began my career designing dresses um, and that was a very different thing. And so getting into jeans and finding jeans that, that would fit my body was particularly challenging. So the objective here is really to just sort of make, make something inclusive so everybody can have an experience with it. We bring our own emotion to the table yeah. in terms of how we feel about it. And it's perfectly acceptable for you to feel however you choose to feel about your body. But the reality is you need to wear clothing. You need to feel good in your clothing. To me, it's all about acceptance. And my perspective was very specific. As someone in the fashion industry, I had knowledge about fashion and access to fashion and access to creating the fashion. Mm. So I had a little bit of a leg up on on other women. I used to be a size 16, just to give you some context. I was always shocked at what my shape was because I never felt like my shape. I had the opposite of body dysmorphic disorder. I always thought I looked fabulous and felt fabulous, and I never felt assigned to my size. Mm -hmm. in terms of my vitality as as a woman and and how I felt entering a room. I I always felt that I I could be an impactful and and attractive um, and vibrant presence regardless of my size. So that, that was just innate in my thought process. Sometimes women, because it's so challenging to find things that to fit, they just say, well, I don't care. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's totally authentic and true. And sometimes It's a badge that they hide behind because they don't find the facility and the access to clothing and ways to make themselves look and feel as good as they can. For me, it was always a personal choice to say, I want to pull my look together regardless of my size. This is how I'm showing up. I say my body is the carriage I arrive in. Mm -hmm. And if I want to put some nice wheels on it and tint my windows, you know, (laughs) whatever, whatever makes my ride make me feel good in my ride. That, that was what my outlook was. So my objective was to create the opportunity and the accessibility to the essentials of what we need to put on our body to allow women to feel good and empowered and confident, regardless of shape, without assigning a value to shape or size. Yeah, I think that is the most important thing because a lot of marketing out there, it's calculated and it's like taking advantage of our insecurities, right? So if you, brand owner, has decided that something on me is a problem area, I will start to believe you because you're so convincing and then I will buy your product to fix my problem area. And often it's something that needs to be purchased over and over and over again to continuously instead of really focusing on the fact that we are all different. That's what I love. And like just in your simple marketing where it's like, just choose your size. We've got something for almost everyone. It's like, hey, we got you. It's support. Such a different mindset. I wish other brands would pay attention and just go, hey, what if you actually celebrated women instead of shamed them into buying your product? Exactly. And I think something that's really important to note about size inclusivity is it's not just larger sizes or curvy shapes. It encompasses all different body types, including small women Mm -hmm. who also have challenges. We're founded on the principle of what I call curve equality. And what curve equality says is that it acknowledges that all shapes are different, but they're created equal without assigning a value to any of the shapes. So something that's really interesting is that we fit our jeans on the fit model has a straight up and down body. She's not curvy at all. Mm -hmm. And we use very supple and stretchy fabric that accommodates curves if it requires a stretch. But what's really universally important about this is it means that if you have a little straight body shape, it's going to fit your body as well as it fits somebody like me who has curves. Because if you need to test the boundaries of the jeans, the the fabric properties allow itself to stretch and accommodate your shape. When I say maximize your assets, that's what it is. It takes your shape, whatever you park in our jean, it's going to leave like you went through the car wash with like shiny (laughs) windows and air freshener. You're going to go through it and you're going to still be the same person that puts those jeans on, but you're just going to leave with the pep in your step. That's the objective. 
What was your experience? I know you shared with me that you went out and tried them on before this conversation. I got four pairs, girl. <laughs> wow. So I ordered two on your website. And because I was so excited and I wanted to try them before we recorded, I also went to my local Nordstrom Rack and I found a pair of jeans and I found a pair of camo pants that are awesome that are also on your website. So no one needs to go anywhere. They could just go to your website. I was doing the math. Let's be honest. I worked from home before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so I don't necessarily wear pajamas on the bottom when I'm working. I don't know. It's a mental thing, but sweats, yes. So I joke around sometimes in this house that like I have zippers and buttons on today. Like I've changed the world just by wearing zippers and buttons. I want to be able to go out and run an errand without looking like I've completely given up. But I also want to be comfortable. And there's something I want to get into too about like what we're not willing to accept anymore. But I will say this, I'm wearing them now. If you're watching this on YouTube, like I've got my jeans on, my zippers and my buttons. And I feel so comfortable, pretty much the same comfort as when I wore sweats, except I feel better. Supported. I feel supported, but I also feel like I made an effort. All I can do is speak for myself. I forgot how important that is to my mental well-being to feel like I made an effort. I have three teenage boys. They've been home every day, all day, with the exception of now they have hybrid school. They leave the house for a few hours a week. They're here. My husband, who has a full-time job, is here. We share an office. I tend to be, rah, rah, it's okay. But it's been hard. It's been really, really hard. I'm starting to see in hindsight that I began to give up and I'm not talking about doing my hair and my makeup and all that for others, but just making an effort for me. I stopped doing that. And when I don't do that, then I don't feel as good. And then I don't act as good. And it's all connected. But here's the other flip side. And I would love to hear what you think. I'm not willing anymore to put myself out there in discomfort all day. Like, I'm not going to go back to a place where I'm wearing heels that hurt you know, unless I'm at it like a really fancy event or whatever, or clothes that I have to suck into. Like I remember being that 20 something girl who would have to lie down on the bed to button my jeans. Hell no. <laughs> Am I ever going to be her again? And so what's been your experience with women around you and in this industry that are really starting to get clear on wanting to look good, wanting to feel good, wanting to feel supported, but not willing to go back into that BS place. It's not even just dressing uncomfortably based on squeezing into clothes, clothes that are not accommodating to your shape, but it's also being forced to be more formal. Mm. Wear things that where society is dictating to you what is appropriate for you to dress for women. There is an assembly woman that we sent some democracy jeans to who was chastised by her male members of the assembly who were wearing ratty jeans and a t-shirt, but she wore leggings and they were saying how inappropriate that is. So there's definitely a societal sexist perspective about what women should be wearing. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think that the pandemic has transformed that. And fortunately for democracy, we built the house. Like we were there in that space already with this casual lifestyle vibe. The other thing um, that we try to do in addition to providing you with clothing that, that is comfortable and affordable, that has fit technology, that has style lines that flatter and enhance your shape, that introduces you to fashion trends in an accessible way where you feel like it's age appropriate. you like, okay, if democracy is introducing this to me, I know that it's on trend. I know it's appropriate for, I don't want to just say for your age, because to me, style is ageless. It's, it's for your vibrancy, whatever you feel. It's a form of expression, not just to fit into things that are comfortable, but to know how to pull a polished look together, whether it's dressing for yourself, as you mentioned, or dressing to step out in the world, that you have that confidence and comfort level that you can pull together an effortless, stylish look that's comfortable, that fits your body, that fits your wallet, that puts a pep in your step and makes you feel like enter the room with a splash. Yeah, I love that. Even if the room is just a Zoom room. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure you stand up so everyone sees your jeans. I want to talk a little bit more about you personally, because rumor has it, thank you, Julie, that you have a lot of opinions on sort of this age and stage. And, you know, I always like to call it the ghost of Christmas future when 
you know, me at 50 or you at almost 60 or anybody who's past the 40s. If you could go back to 40-year-old Karen, what would you tell her? What have you learned in these two decades since turning 40? Oh my gosh, so much. Well, I kind of think of of every stage of life as a little gear shift in mm. in my cross country journey. Even if you backpedal to the twenties, you know, because everybody aspirationally like twenty five is like that that magical age that advertisers that brands always yeah. pander to. But when I think about my my twenty something self. I had keys to the car, but I often didn't have gas to take it anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just kind of getting started, but you're struggling financially. So you have all of this energy and desire, but but not necessarily the capacity to, to follow through on it. When I got to my 30s, which is when I got married and built our first home and started a family, I had maybe the keys to the car. Maybe I had the money for the gas but I didn't have a roadmap. Mm. I wasn't quite sure where I was going. I just knew that I was I was in motion. The 40s were magical for me. That was a sweet spot in my life because I had had enough seasoned experience. I was defined, okay? My children were in middle school. My career was in full gear. What really transpired for me in that moment was the reemergence of me as a person Mm. because we are multitaskers and jugglers. So maybe my message to my 40-something-year-old self was, it's perfectly okay to have personal goals and aspirations. It's not a value judgment on your role as a mother or a wife or a sister or a daughter, whatever else there is. Because as women, we feel, or at least let me say for myself, I felt like it was an elective. Even though maybe my career and my contribution to the household was a necessity, I had to treat it like an elective. If I was going to elect to have this all-encompassing career, I had better figure out a way to be completely dialed in to motherhood and to to all of the activities and things transpiring and being present and available and involved in everybody's lives. That's just such a huge burden. Yeah, so much pressure. And I think a lot of our relationship with what our weight is has to do with, did we give up exercising? Did we give up planning meals, healthy meals and eating on the run, you know, and maybe making choices that weren't as healthy of a choice because we didn't have time to prepare and to think about it. So that was really a moment in time where I tried to integrate and add back in all of these other elements about reemerging as a person that I had created these lives and shaped and nurtured them and a lifetime partner, you know, with my husband. But that that's really a formidable point where I think everything is all sort of just resonating, where we're our most powerful self to then chart what the next phase is. So democracy really was born as I entered my 50s. And and I have a milestone birthday coming in the fall. What's really interesting about age is when we assign a number to the age, we assign a perception and a value and an assessment about it. We're on a journey. You're looking out the windows as you're traveling on your journey. You're not identifying this is the moment where I'm looking out the, the, the left side of my window. That's not how we think. But right. with age, we make it something so much more. And the truth of the matter is the journey is until it's over. So why do we have to assign a value or a thought process or limitations on mm. what stage of the journey we're in because we're continuing to progress. And so if I think about the 50s, you know, I reach back to my 40-year-old self, what did I experience during this phase and what did I experience in this pandemic? It was the most transformative time in my life because I was somebody who traveled to New York probably 10, 12 times a year, to China twice a year, to Europe three times a year, to other cities or states. I never experienced sequential weekends. We just celebrated our 30th anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. (laughs) At our 25th, we had invited a couple out. We went to Napa and my husband toasted us and said to our 17th anniversary and the couple said, I thought we were celebrating your 25th anniversary. And he said, well, technically, based on Karen's travel, we've really only been together for 17 years. <laughs> and I can say when we celebrated our 30th, we recovered all of that time because we never spent so much time together in the same physical space. So we've all gone through this like reacquaintance with, with our home, 
yeah. what that home life is like for me. When my children were growing up, we didn't sit down to conventional family dinners because there was soccer practice. I, you know, we were all on different schedules mm -hmm. during the pandemic. We eat dinner three to four times a week as a family. That's an incredible gift that, mm -hmm. that I would not have had were we not in this scenario. It also forced me to be grounded. I didn't get on an airplane for a calendar year. And what that allowed me to do was to be so much more impactful in a lot of different ways to be present for myself, but also in my work, because during this time we launched democracy on the home shopping network. Right. And normally you have to travel. It was, it's a big time drain. Now I have a studio set up in my living room. I broadcast from my studio, but because of the pandemic, they were limited to being able to have people on set. Both my mother who is 81 and my daughter who's 27 have been models on HSN for me. Wow. My mom's journey in her 80s is just lighting up for her. She's getting all of this really like fun and interesting dynamic experience as, as participating and seeing herself on TV. And for me to be able to share it with my mother and my daughter, which I would never be able to do if I weren't traveling there. Every change that's happened transformatively in my career has been imposed upon me. And the success that has come of it has come as a result of my outlook and perspective, looking at that bull and saying, I'm entering the ring. If I grab that bull by the horns, he can't stab me. Instead of hiding and saying, I'm going to watch the bull in the ring for a couple of weeks so I know what their moves are so I can be safe in that space. So it's all about the outlook and energy of, of being fearless and embracing and accepting change and having the audacity and the confidence to know that you don't need the experience. You just need the um, enthusiasm and the tenacity and the will to take something on. You talk about imposter, the imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. I call it like feeling like a poser. But if, if you don't step into the role, you'll never know if you can legitimately play that role. You have to be willing to try. Exactly. Just to go back to that, like cliche of don't dress for the job you have dress for the job you want. You could take that a step further and really just put yourself out there as if you are in the space you want to be. Resilience is one of the topics that comes up a lot. For me, I did an episode a year and a half ago with my five sisters, and we talked a lot about resilience. That's what's happening right now, I think, with a lot of women in that they maybe their jobs go away or their families are home and they have to juggle. I mean, God knows we take on the family extra <laughs> for the most part more than anyone else. So everything's hit the fan and we have an opportunity to sort of like redefine and reemerge, as you said in a way that maybe is even better than what we could have imagined if everything had been smooth sailing. I love that you're pointing out all of the things that you've learned and that you've discovered about yourself or about your mom and your daughter, but wouldn't have happened if you weren't shoved into this situation. I think one of the most transformative things in my industry and at my company, this hybrid work from home is something that we embraced and we were very successful at it. Fashion is not something that you can really do remotely. Mm -hmm. We figured out a way to do it. Like normally I would have this conversation. I'd be at work. People would be interrupting me all the time. So, yeah. so the freedom to just to say what I need to do can be done wherever I am mm. to save time in commuting and traveling. It's like, I like my commute downstairs. Like that's the perfect commute for me. And, you know, work is 36 miles away. So it takes a lot of time away to do that. So we're all learning. Consequently, because if I'm working from home, I'm not commuting. I find my travel time in my car is when I check in with my mom or my friends. Yes. So I also feel emotionally I've lost connection with a lot of friends because I don't have that regular commute all the time, which is the free space, uninterrupted time. To, to try to reconnect with people. And I know a lot of the women that I talk to have had that same disconnect. They're overly mm -hmm. connected at home and haven't quite determined how to reconnect because we're not physically social with people that we used to be as physically social with. So true. I feel like the pandemic has turned Gen X people into millennials <laughs> in that I find that 
I work with millennials sometimes who are like, oh, I don't work certain hours or I have to recharge or, you know, I work from home because it's best for me. They prioritize them in a way that Gen X and boomers like never did or never could. You know, you look at the fashion industry, you look at how long it's been happening. It's going to take these new attitudes and fresh new ideas Maybe you have to be in the office X amount of hours or so many days or whatever, but you don't always have to be there. And so I feel like the pandemic has opened Gen X's eyes to what's possible. And the millennials are like, welcome, we've been waiting for you. (laughs) I mean, I, I look at my mother and shopping online. The younger generations are are more comfortable shopping online and experimenting and discovering brands and music. We're a touch and feel brick and mortar kind of generation. We also launched our um, shoppable site, democracyclothing.com, November 2019. So right before this pandemic hit. Perfect timing. So two things that are life-changing for me and the most fulfilling things are the relationship I have by being on HSN, because I just look at myself as I, I'm like the lighthouse person. I'm out there trying to identify what we need as women and to curate. And if you like my taste level and my curation and you trust my execution, that's what I'm really trying to accomplish with democracy. HSN gives me all of this time and hours. You can go on the site, you click on the video, it explains everything to you. So even buying a vacuum cleaner, it's like if you don't want to read directions, you can go on the site and they show you how to work it. That's such an amazing connection to the end user customer. So I'm able to share the story behind things. Facebook groups, I know that you put something out there asking people what jeans do they wear and everybody kind of gets to engage. And we don't know who we each other are, but But we can be engaged in conversation and there's a certain trust level. And I think that's what 40 Thrive started was the ability to put women together to share their experiences and their discoveries and to problem solve Mm -hmm. for each other and to introduce each other to things, enhancing their lives or life changing or, or, or solve a problem. That's a really transformative experience to know that you have anonymous buddy out there advise and support one another. Mm -hmm. And it seems to really work. There's just something special when women show up to support other women. Has giving back and really impacting women and issues and all of that always been important to you personally? Well, I think as we're talking about like stages of life, um, I started, my background is I have a poli-sci degree. Mm obviously a natural path to design, right? So (laughs) (laughs) I was very disillusioned with what I learned from being an intern in Washington, D.C. And I had said to myself, you know, what motivates people to, to enter that space is because they think they can make a difference. But in order to be the person making the difference, you have to compromise. And then you end up not being able to be as authentic to what your values and motivations are. So I had told myself, You can volunteer to do anything to support people, but if you make it a career, then it may impact your ability to really follow through on that. But as as life took over, I didn't find myself having the time or understanding what my path to making an impact would be. And so through Mother's Quest and, and connecting with Julie, I wanted to use the platform for social impact. And the objective was really to identify change-making women and to amplify what they're doing and to help them look good and feel good while doing good. And, and so we're just trying to, to find more ways to really get out there and make those connections with women and to give them that positive experience. There's so many things that we experience in our journey as women that are physically transformative that we don't know how to solve. So by having that opportunity to have a conversation with you and to share with your audience things that are not unique, you're not on your own. We, we all understand it. It's a, a really legitimate and authentic message that, that fills me up when I can make a difference in women's lives. Yeah, it's awesome. Sometimes we as women don't recognize our own power mm-hmm. and our own potential. And you don't have to paint a big broad stroke. You could just dot the corner of the painting and still make an impact. And so just touching one life. Yeah impacts that life. And then that life has the ability to touch and impact another life. 
Absolutely. Well, Karen, thank you so much for coming on. And I just appreciate the work that you do. Thank you for being gracious and sharing this space with me. I hope I can help or inspire people in your 45 community to be bold. I love that. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you so much for listening. I'm thrilled that you did. Please invite a friend to the 40 Thrive free and private community on Facebook because then they can find out how to get a free pair of jeans. And don't forget to head on over to democracyclothing.com and get your 25% off with promo code 40thrive. Until next time, take care and keep thriving. Uh